This experiment uses a robust, reproducible, fluorescence-based assay to determine exonuclease activity. Incubate the purified enzyme with the fluorescent DNA substrate to allow the enzyme to sequentially degrade DNA. Then resolve the DNA on an acrylamide urea gel to separate the degradation products by size. Next, use fluorescence imaging to identify and quantify the extent of exonuclease activity. Analyzed results can determine the preferred substrate, reaction conditions, processivity, and overall activity of the enzyme. The main advantage of this technique over existing radioactivity-based techniques is that the DNA substrates are stable for a long time, allowing excellent reproducibility, decreasing cost, and increasing safety. First, adjust the bacterial lysate to 20 millimolar imidazole using an appropriate volume of 2 molar imidazole stock solution. Then adjust the volume to at least 1 milliliter using 20 millimolar imidazole. Wash a 1 milliliter His trap column with 10 milliliters of MilliQ water. Then equilibrate the column with 10 milliliters of 20 millimolar imidazole. Next, load the lysate onto the column. As the lysate is loaded onto the column, significant back pressure may be experienced. This is perfectly normal. Do not be tempted to apply too much force to the syringe and maintain a steady, even pressure. It is usual to see a mild color change as the lysate enters the column. Collect the flow through in a sterling bijou bottle, 7 milliliter capacity, and store on ice. Then wash the column with 10 milliliters of 20 millimolar imidazole. Now pass 5 milliliters of 40 millimolar imidazole through the column. Watch the plunger of the syringe carefully to measure the 1 milliliter fraction.